Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. The Lord will strengthen your heart, is the title of this devotion. David was a man who knew how to come into that strength by faith. You know, Smith Wigglesworth, and I'm not quoting him exactly like he said it, but he would say, by faith, we can enter into that strength and God will come upon us, but we can go also to Him. It's kind of the point. In other words, he said, God can just all of a sudden take a hold of you by His Spirit and power for what He wants to do, but you can take a hold of Him for what you believe He, he wants to do. And, and I understand what, what Smith Wigglesworth meant by the, he said that. I, I really love his daily devotion where they've taken his teachings and narrated, uh, written them down, and it's phenomenal. If you don't have it, I would encourage you to get it. I just love his Holy Ghost language. There's a language to Smith Wigglesworth that's unique to him. I have not heard any other man, uh, and I haven't heard many, so don't hold me to that, but I've not ever heard any other man that has that kind of language. There, there was just a certain language in the spirit that God was able to give. You know, on the day of Pentecost, they, they were given many languages so they could speak to all tribe, tongues, and nations. And I love the different languages from the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and here in Psalm 27, we can see this phenomenal Psalm of David where he starts out by saying, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Oh, again, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And then in verse 13 and 14, I'll read that to you from the Amplified. He says, uh, What... What would have become of me had I not believed that I would see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living? Wait and hope for and expect the Lord. Be brave and of good courage and let your heart be stout and enduring. Yes, wait and hope for and expect the Lord. And the, Amplify, and the King James will say, Wait, verse 14, on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. He shall strengthen your heart. It's always a bit of a test of our faith when we encounter the weaknesses of our human nature or the threats of the circumstances of some physical battle, emotional battle, mental battle, relational battle, financial battle moral battle and you feel the incompetence and the inability of your own nature there's always a bit of a test of your faith that is the real fundamental issue actually and that you then in your weakness and then in that incompetence inability and when i say incompetence in other words you don't have the power to deal with it you you can't you can't handle it and I know for some people that, that seems to be the end of their character, but I tell you, it's the beginning of God's grace in you when you, in your weakness, cry out to Him. And He is the strength of your life. And that you are there before His throne of grace, awaiting that mercy that renews you inwardly daily. And the strength begins to rise. As I said yesterday, the power of Christ rests on me. The strength begins to rise and the Lord strengthens your heart. The Lord strengthens your heart. You've got to have that experience by faith. And you've got to have it to the degree that you live by it daily. 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 I'll never forget it. Mariah, who's now 23, I think, our daughter, she was a little girl and we happened to be visiting in America and went to Disneyland in California and, and we were walking. She was holding my hand and I just quietly, real quiet, just said, I just began praying in tongues and I could feel her spirit connect with me and she said, Dad, you're praying. 
I said, why are you praying? I said, oh, I love that. Oh, it's the greatest treasure to have with your children to connect in the spirit. Where it says in Isaiah, uh, Isaiah, um, what is it, 21, ver the last verse of chapter 21, uh, where he says, the same spirit that's in you will be in your children. And she said, Dad, you're praying. I said, why are you praying? I said, oh, honey, I just feel that strength of Jesus. You see, I, I was feeling my heart weakening with the world all around me, and I, I just needed that strengthening. And the Bible says, when we pray in the Holy Ghost, we're building ourselves up in our most holy faith and abide in the Heavenly Father's love. It's Isaiah 59, verse 21. The same spirit that's in you will be in your children. 59, verse 21. And so I just was praying softly and I could feel the Lord strengthening my heart, keeping my heart. The Bible says above all in Proverbs 4, 20, that you keep, keep your heart, out of which flow the issues of life. Keeping what? I can't, Paul says, I have committed into your care, into your keeping. All the Lord, Jude verse 24, is able to keep you from falling and present you without fault in the presence of His glory. The keeping, and I was just praying to commit myself in His keeping and His strength started to rise up in me and come up in me. And, and the Lord says here to you and me, wait on the Lord. In other words, stay close to Him. Be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. The title of this devotion. The Lord will strengthen your heart. He will. He will. He will renew your strength. He will restore your strength. He will rebuild your strength again. Come on, hear this today. Let's enter this new year with the strength of the Lord and see Him able to accomplish in us and through us what humanly is impossible. For without God, I cannot do it. But with God, I can do all things. Come on, let the Lord strengthen you that this new year is a year that, wow, God gets all the glory. And, and we really have to seek it. We have to take time to seek that. Wait on the Lord. He will strengthen you. Wait means seek, stay, have time with Him. Have time with Him. Insist on it. Insist on it. As it says in Hosea 10 verse 12 or 12 verse 10, it says that the Lord will bring fertility, fruitfulness back to your conscience, to your heart as you seek Him. Fruitfulness. And here David says in Psalm 40, which is one of his phenomenal messianic psalms, I waited patiently for the Lord and He inclined to me, heard my cry, and brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon the rock, established my step, and put a new song in my mouth of praise to God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust. Oh, my goodness. How I love this thinking. How I love it. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, and that you keep going to him and He can rebuild your strength inwardly. Where you used to maybe have such Holy Ghost strength moving in you into the things that enabled you in your youth. But don't you think that in your old age that that will not be available? No, even more so, David says, you in Psalm 71, who has shown me great and severe troubles will revive me again, surround me with comforts on every kind and bless me. Oh, David expected in his old age that the Lord would be such a phenomenal strength. And the reason why is because he wanted the new generation to see what God could do for anyone who trusts in him. You see, it's so important today that other people begin to see what God's doing for us, right? And that we can do more in our old age because our faith has matured <coughs> than we were able to do when we were young and had may, maybe often more zeal than real power. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in His Word, I do hope. My soul waits. 
for the Lord. My soul waits. Father, I'm waiting. Father, I'm here before your throne of grace. Father, I know your mercies never fail. Your compassions are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. It is good, Lamentations 3 verse 26, that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good. It is good for me to be in this time of waiting before you as my roots grow deeper into you, as I yearn and hunger and thirst to be nourished by your strength and power to live as I should in this day that my children and my children's children can see your spirit and power working me. I wait, I wait, and I hope. I wait, and I hope. I'm not going to act like God's not going to do it. No, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. I, I am not going to act like God's not going to do it. <laughs> you know, it's funny how in the new year, and I don't know what it is in me, but I say to Virginia, honey, I feel that this is our due season. <laughs> and at that moment, I am not aware that I said that before, like every year for the last 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> and I've said, honey, this, I can just feel it. This is it. And she looks at me, she said, she said that last year, the year before too. But see, that's hope. Hope is that absolute being convinced that what God has promised that you can't see yet is waiting for you. And that you know it is there and that you wait for it with expectation and blessed assurance that it's already yours and it's coming down from the throne of grace and it will not fail to be there for you. Oh, how pleases God, utterly pleases Him to see you wait on Him in absolute blessed assurance in His great love and faithfulness and truth. Oh, I love being in that spirit of waiting before Him, that spirit of expectancy, that spirit of blessed assurance. It's not a waiting that has no hope. No, it's a waiting assured by promises. It's a waiting assured by graces and gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's a waiting that has been built inside of you through promises of the Word that have come alive on you that despite the symptoms and circumstances, you know what's coming your way. So let me close with you in Psalm 25. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. A statement David used so many of his psalms. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. But let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. And he's referring here to different things, but one of the things I want to refer to is the people that um, is that not the people, is that we are insincere about our expectation. We're not sincere. What do you mean? We say we want God to do it, but at every opportunity of truly standing still and knowing that He is God, Psalm 4610, we move. We move. Or something is able to move us, dislodge us. The Bible says that they that believe are not shaken or moved in Psalm 112. They that believe are not moved, not shaken. So you stand, you hold fast in faith, you endure, you persevere. That's godly, divine character of His faith formed and shaped and developed in the heart that stands fast and you're not insincere. You say you're waiting for God to do it, but when the opportunities rise, you fail, you fade away, you, you, you give up. And of course, Israel to the promised land, they, they said, yes, we believe God who delivered us out of Egypt and He, but then when it came down to it, they, they felt like grasshoppers and they, and they believed what they felt instead of believe what God said, like Joshua and Caleb. And they cowered away and they all perished in the wilderness because they would not believe to obey God, to enter in by His Spirit and power. So. Let's not be insincere about what we expect God to do. 
I, I know that that's a difficult thing to answer within yourself. The only one that can truly answer it is what I'm going to read to you next. If you say, okay, pastor, I don't know. Am I insincere? Am I, am I one who cowers away at the right moments? And what do I do about it? I, I'm not 100% sure if I am truly sincere. What do I do? I'll read it to you what you should do. Show me your way, O Lord. Verse 4 of Psalm 25. Teach me your path. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all day. Remember, O Lord, your tender mercy and your loving kindness, for they are from of old. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in the way. The humble he guides in justice. The humble he teaches his way. The paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. You see, the sincerity of faith, the sincerity of integritous faith, of total trust and dependency of our Lord that enables us to see our heart strengthened again is what He works in us by His Spirit. He works that by His Spirit in you, that sincerity of heart that we see in Jesus when He prayed, O oh Lord, if there's any way for this cup, this cup of trembling of the sins of all the people from, to pass me by, then, but not my will, but let your will be done, Father. And you could see him laboring in the Spirit to know in himself the manifestation of that will of the Father, because it says by doing that will and by offering himself, he has forever set us apart unto God in Hebrews 10, verse 10. And you see him laboring, not my will, but thine will. He is laboring as the Son of God in the Son of Man to make the Son of Man the Son of God. And where man says they want it, but then at the right point go their own way instead of God's way, that's what he conquered right there because that's the very root of sin. It's the root of sin. The root of sin is really that spirit of unbelief that goes your way instead of his way. And David sought for God to work that in him, as I read to you here from Psalm 25. And as you seek the Lord in your time of waiting, He will strengthen your heart by bringing you in that full persuasion of the spirit of truth in you where you're sold out no matter what the challenge is, no matter what the opposition difficulty is, no matter what the symptoms are, you have this spirit inside of you and He has strengthened your heart. Wow, it's good, isn't it? Amen. Have a good day.